Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Here next to me is my new toy, an Anycubic Photon. The Anycubic Photon is a resin 3D printer. It uses a liquid resin that cures when it's exposed to UV light. The object is then built up by stacking thin layers of cured resin. And the detail and surface finish is fantastic, especially if you compare it to other 3D technologies like FDM. The Anycubic Photon consists of basically only three major parts. The build plate is a solid piece of anodized aluminium. It traverses up and down in the Z axis and the positioning is very important. So before you start printing, you need to do leveling. The vat is a tray that contains the resin during the printing process. The transparent bottom of the vat is made from a special non-stick plastic film called FEP. And finally we have the exposure unit, which consists of a high resolution display and a UV LED backlight. On the back side you will find a connector for the power supply. On the right hand side panel you will find a USB connector. Instead of using the supplied USB stick, I decided to use a USB stick from a well-known brand. And last but not least, we have a power switch. On the front there is a 3.5 inch touch screen. This is the main user interface since there is no Wi-Fi or Ethernet. But that's enough talking. Let's print something to see how this machine works. So, I decided to go to Thingiverse to download something. And I found this battle mech, which uh, was the perfect size. I made a quick check of what the design looked like by loading it into a mesh mixer. After that I loaded the design into the slicer software that comes with the printer. And after tilting the model I decided to use the auto support feature to add a support structure. Next step is to run the slicer and produce a file that can be read by the printer. The file contains an image for each layer of the model. This file is then transferred to the USB stick. Resin is quite unhealthy, so make sure that you use uh, protection when you are handling it. I recommend using gloves and eye protection, but you can also use a face mask to be on the safe side. After pouring the resin into the vat, we install the vat into the printer. Make sure the vat goes all the way in before you tighten the screws. Now we can insert the USB stick with the file into the printer. And after that we can finally start the print job. Alright, uh, the printing will take approximately four and a half hours, so I uh, suggest that you go and grab a cup of coffee and uh, watch a movie or two. Nah, I'm just kidding. After the printing,
printing has completed, we will handle uncured resin directly. So we need to put the protection gear on again. After inspecting that everything went well, we need to pry the model loose from the build plate. I prefer to use a metal spatula for that purpose, instead of using the plastic one that is included with the printer. Next step is to wash off the uncured resin. For this purpose I use isopropyl alcohol, uh, so I have two jars with this and one jar of water. Cleanup of the build plate is done using paper towel and alcohol. At this point we are basically ready for a new print if you want to. But since I'm not going to do another print within 48 hours, I will pour back the unused resin into the bottle. I'm using a funnel with a strainer at the bottom to avoid that cured small pieces of resin will go back into the bottle. I use alcohol to clean out the vat. Since the FEP film at the bottom is very sensitive to scratches, do not use paper towel and instead I use a soft uh, alcohol wipe. Resin is quite messy, so I try to clean everything very thoroughly with alcohol. So after that everything is cleaned and the printer is ready to go again. I used an airbrush to uh, remove all the moisture from the model. The next step will be to do some final curing under a UV lamp. So I will leave it there for 20 minutes. After the curing has completed, it's time to start to remove all the supports. The resin is quite brittle. Uh, it's like a clear pot if you compare it to styrene. So you have to be careful not to break anything. This is interesting. It looks like there is a collision between the support and uh, the model itself. So it seems like it's a good idea to review the result of the auto support feature in the slicer software. So yeah, 
let's carry on to solder our way through the jungle on all the supports. Unfortunately, I broke off one of the legs on the model and uh, in retrospect it's uh, actually a good idea to use a resin saw in some places instead of using a side cutter because it puts less strain on the model. But that was easily fixed with some CA glue. And it's time to put some primer on. The green resin that comes shipped with the photon has a really bad contrast, so it's difficult to see the printing artifacts. I use a base coat of pink to prepare for the yellow paint that will be the main color of the model. So here's the yellow base coat. I used Guns Aquas H329. So after some brush painting I decided to reuse a couple of decals from some old 172 scale aircraft kits. And after that I proceed with some shipping, using the sponge method. and I finish off the weathering with an oil wash. And after a flat coat, the model is finished. It's not my finest work, but uh, I'm happy with it anyway. If I did this again, I would probably scale up the model a little bit and also cut it into sections. But the big question for me was, can I use the photo to make small parts that I can use to detail up my uh, scale mold kits? The answer is yes, but I need a 3D modeling tool to achieve this. I decided to go for Fusion 360. There is a little bit of a learning curve to uh, start using it but uh, there are very good uh, tutorials on YouTube. So if you uh, are planning to using a tool like this and like me, have never used it before, I really recommend to uh, start looking around on YouTube. 
The parts that come out of the photon has an incredible detail, but they are of course not flawless. Uh, it's possible to see uh, printing artifacts like the layer lines. These parts are actually missile rails for my um, 172 scale Viggen that I'm uh, currently building. These are parts for a 148 scale aircraft. So my conclusion is that uh, the Photon is a very capable and uh, useful tool. And you will see me using it a lot in the upcoming builds on this channel. And finally, here are some revealed shots of the Battletech Firemoth Dasher. Thank you for watching, and I see you in the next one. Goodbye.